So good afternoon all participants. Uh, participant, you can write to your roll number in chat box for attendance. You can write only roll numbers. Don't write a uh, roll number, only numerical number. Okay, so today's race person has been joined. So I welcome to uh, today's resource person, Dr. Mandar Bhanushi, sir. He has a head faculty of science and technology, Mumbai University, Mumbai. So I hand over this uh, technical session to Dr. Mandar Bhanushi, sir. Welcome, sir. Uh, yes, Namaste. Uh, thank Namaste, you very sir. much, sir, for uh, inviting me for this uh, session on use of ICT. So dear participants, uh, good afternoon, welcome. <clears throat> I'll be sharing my screen and uh, we'll be interacting with uh, at many instances. I expect all of you to be very active participant as I can see at least from the chat that all of you are putting your role numbers as instructed by the HRDC director. So that means uh, we can have a good interaction because that is how my presentations generally are. I expect the same with all of you. <clears throat> I'll just share the screen in a few minutes. Okay. So let me know if you're able to see the screen. Yes, sir. You're uh, visible. Screen is visible. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, fine. So uh, this presentation uh, is about India's ICT initiatives in e-learning. That is what uh, we are going to see. And uh, just a second. <clears throat> So we are going to talk about India's different initiatives, the ICT initiatives. When we say ICT is information and communication technology in the area of e-learning with some very specific reference to uh, MOOCs, which is Massive Open Online Courses. So before I begin and share with the first uh, presentation slide, it would be also nice if you can put a message in the chat and let me know which subjects you people are teaching. So it is mathematics, economics, chemistry, social sciences, languages. So what are the subjects you, uh, which you people are teaching? If you can just put a message in the chat, it would be good to find out. Okay, what me? As I can see the first message. Okay. Economics, home science. Okay. Physics, good. English, okay. Chemistry, pharmacy is also there, nice. Okay. okay. Commerce, history, computer applications. Okay. Life science, Achha. library science. <clears throat> That's good. Geography is also there. Textiles, zoology. Nice. So a variety of uh, disciplines I can see. It's a good blend. Sociology. Good. Civil engineering. Nice. So we have uh, from science, from technology, from humanities, from social sciences, from commerce, educational science. Okay. Social work. So I think all major faculties are physical education. Nice. Hindi. <clears throat> Good. Okay. Mechanical engineering. Okay. Are you allowed to use the microphone and 
interact or is it only through the chat? Uh, sir, uh, I will allow for uh, just uh, some disturbance. In agree, agree. So right now they are not allowed. Okay. 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 Uh, I will, no, it's okay. I will, Whenever you're ready, I'll request you. Maybe you can just yes, uh, allow them later on. I'll continue the presentation. So we yes, are yes. going to specifically focus on ICT initiatives in the area of e-learning in the uh, for the first half. And second half, we'll talk about the core component of e-learning and ICT initiative, which is massive open online courses. As you all know that in 21st century now, specifically after the COVID pandemic, uh, all of us are into this blended mode, flipped learning, hybrid learning kind of environment where many universities and colleges are trying to think about what way we can introduce this e-learning in the conventional mode, that is in the face-to-face -face mode. See, I am from the Distance Education Institute of University of Mumbai. So for us, the learners are remote learners. They don't come to the lectures every day. But for conventional programs, the learners are coming to the classrooms regularly. And still there is a requirement for which the teachers are expected as per the 7th pay uh, UGC gazette notification also that I'll be showing you the copy of that in one of the slides that all of us contribute into this major area, which is the massive open online courses. And uh, we all should also look into this particular area where right now we are very behind if you see the international statistics. So let us begin. <clears throat> Can you identify the things which are there on your screen right now? And uh, if you can identify which is amongst this or which are amongst these which you are using right now in your daily day-to-day -day, uh, lectures, in your day-to-day -day college university programs, which of these you are actually using? That is my question to you. So first is identifying whether you know, have you seen these logos before any one of these or few of these like NPTEL, somebody has already written, Swayam. Okay. Fine. Okay. Uh, which of these you are actually using? That's my question. Okay. Virtual Labs, NDL, Swayam, Hindi. Okay. Geography. Fine. Geography is good. Go Okay, NPTEL, virtual labs, okay. Swayam for teacher upgradation programs, okay. So you're using Swayam, that's good. Okay, so these uh, images which you are seeing on your screen right now, these are logos of different ICT initiatives of the Ministry of Education. So through UGC, through AICT, all these initiatives are there and uh, it is expected that all the higher education institutions in this country uh, should be using this uh, all these courses which are available on the platforms for the 40 percent of credits which can be taken online uh, which is the regulation uh, given by the ugc so 40 percent of the total number of credits a student can take through these online courses that is what government is asking so we can use this for that benefit. So let us uh, look at all these uh, different initiatives one by one into different categories. Okay. So can you list down one initiative in each domain of say research, uh, teaching, learning, evaluation, academic administration, uh, some kind of simulated lab experiences, one initiative which you are currently using, okay, not what we have seen in the previous case. In the previous case, what we have seen, these are some of the initiatives which you can see on the screen. Of these, uh, in which area are you using? Your university, your college is using it for the academic administration, for example, taking the attendance of the learners. Which kind of ICT initiative? Which kind of ICT initiative are you using in your particular college, in your university 
in which of these domains in the area of research in the area of teaching learning evaluation in the area of academic administration for some kind of simulated lab experiences for your student and uh, specifically i'm asking about uh, your institution or your college or you as a teacher okay <clears throat> So I can see one answer as you are using PowerPoint presentations and you are using attendance software. That is uh, Professor Sarfaraz Khan has responded. Okay, fine. So you are using for attendance. Okay. And uh, what do you use rule number 152 for teaching and learning evaluation? Okay, what do you use? In which domain and what is that you use? So Google Classroom is for teaching learning evaluation. Fine. 179 for learning. What are you using? Okay. Swati Madam says we are using EPG Patshala for the junior being students of for BKS. BKS is what? Bharti Knowledge Systems. What is BKS? Oh, for books. Okay. <laughs> okay. We have this IKS. No, IKS is Indian Knowledge System. And many times, even in my presentation, I write BKS, Bharatiya Knowledge System. So I thought, is it for that? Anyways. Okay. Google Classroom for sharing notes. Fine. Okay. So some of you wrote uh, uh, virtual labs. So are you using it in your classrooms and colleges for regularly or it was during the COVID times you were using virtual labs? We have shown the Sindhu for research papers. That's very good. Very nice. Yeah, some of me, a few, three, four of you wrote virtual labs that you know about virtual labs, the logo you were able to identify. Then for what purpose do you use the virtual labs? So we have Moodle for online teaching, extra online free course courses. Yeah, there are many online courses which are free, which are available. Enlist is what this rule number 66 is writing. Okay, good. Even rule number one has it an enlist. Okay. Then we have uh, sometimes occasionally for the virtual lab, I think that was a question. For chemistry, you are using. That is good. Fine. Uh, how many of you don't use any kind of these ICT initiatives? So you can just uh, say, uh, I or V, okay, that is, uh, we are not using anything. I'm not using, I'm not using any kind of virtual labs. I'm not using any kind of extra software and hardware. We are just into still the grand olden days where teaching, learning, everything is happening through the blackboard and nothing we are able to do using any kind of ICT tools. Is it like that? Those who are not answering, for example, there are hundred plus people here. Okay, we have a language lab for English, roll number 23. That's good. YouTube websites is what you're using. Okay. Uh, NPTEL using for students and staff members also. That is very nice. If you're using it for the staff, that's quite good. Because uh, as teachers, we need to upgrade regularly, right? So if you're using for your staff, that is a very good initiative of your college. Good. Good. Okay, fine. Let us move forward. Okay, let us go one by one and try to understand. So EPG Partshala is again a very nice uh, initiative for, from the old, uh, the earlier known as MHRD, now called as Ministry of Education. And there was this National Mission on Education through ICT, NME ICT. So NME ICT is National Mission on Education through ICT. It was a project through which this EPG Patshala initiative was uh, started by the ministry. And uh, through this, uh, there was a full two years postgraduate, four semesters content created by teachers from all universities in this country. So very much, uh, you can say good quantity also and a good quality content has been created in more than 70 subjects across all disciplines. And what is the important thing here that the content is interactive in nature. It is not just video monologues. Okay, there is these are all interactive also in nature. And in all areas like social sciences, arts, fine arts, humanities, 
basic sciences, mathematical sciences, linguistics, different languages. So now we have the Adhyayan of it, which is uh, the books for UG and PG courses. We have the UGC MOOCs, which is a vertical of Swayam. And we have e here, which is again a vertical of EPG Partshara. Let us look at this website. Okay, so this is the EPG Partshara website, as you can see. And all this, this is a list of different courses which are available. In case uh, there are participants in this gathering who have not visited the EPG Partshala website any time, okay, let me share the, in the chat I'll share, okay. This is a link for EPG Partshala and all of you should definitely go and look into your subject. For example, there was a participant from Home Science I could see. So you can see under Home Science there are many good courses created, for example, food production. And then you can choose the inventory control. So here you get a e-text out of it. So if you want to learn more, no, I'm just I'm just okay, there were some audio disturbances, but fine. Let us come back to the presentation. So we have this EPG Partshala unit, as you can see. And in many cases, what do we have? We have a video also made. Okay, in uh, some programs, it may be there. In some programs, it may not be there, for example. But for the most of the things, there were video lectures which were created. Uh, I can show you, for example, my subject is mathematics. So I can go into this. Okay. Or we can add some e text is there in most of the things. This is a video lecture, as you can see. In many cases, what they have also added to this is the evaluation part. So you can see there's a quiz here. This is the tab. So if you go to the quiz tab on the EPG Partshala website, you can also ask a student to do some kind of evaluation. For example, let's take business economics, fundamentals of econometrics. So here we can have this MCQ based question and there is this timer also. So uh, teaching, learning, evaluation, everything you can see in this EPG Partshala website. That is the beauty of that. And you can make the best use of it for any kind of flipped learning purpose. So this is a place where the government has invested crores of rupees. So approximately two crore rupees were given for one PG program. And all four semesters, uh, each semester, for a minimum four papers. So at least 16 papers per program. That is what uh, the funding was given to many professors of our Indian universities only. And they have created very beautiful content in very different, in all diverse kind of subjects. Like you can see women's studies, gender studies is there, social work is there, psychology, Russian studies, Spanish, visual arts. So disaster management, for example. So many subjects have been covered in this i would really request each one of you to visit the website and take the best use of that it is something which you can really do so that your students become self-dependent we are talking today about swavalambi bharat and neb 2020 says that we should make the learners swavalambi through what through a pedagogical shift what is a pedagogical shift teach the students how to learn we teachers in 21st century are no more teachers. We are all facilitators. This is all what we know. In many online training sessions, you might have heard about it. We have to go to the practical part of that. We actually need to become facilitators and that can only happen if we make the learners self-dependent and not depending upon us for each and everything. What is the importance of a teacher in 21st century? is to become a guide, is to become a mentor, is to facilitate the learning, is to uh, do the transformation of information to knowledge and knowledge to wisdom. 30 years before, 40 years before, a teacher was a...
physical library also has shifted to digital library the teachers also have become now hybrid teachers for example most of the learning which is information based is freely available on internet so in our classroom teaching learning if we incorporate this component where what is information what is just a kind of simple thing which is already available through these ep bg patshala courses or many other sources give it for the students to learn let them learn themselves then what remains our role in the classroom is the facilitation part so that is what we all can focus when we are giving lectures in our colleges and universities let us look at the next initiative which is the swayam prabha initiative now what is swayam prabha swayam prabha is a group of dth channels direct to home and all this direct to home dth channels are free of cost there are 34 dth channels for swayam prabha in addition to that the government has also added pm e vidya initiative and what is this is very innovative kind of initiative pm e vidya under that there are 12 channels for grade 1 to grade 12 standard 1 to 12 standard for all 12 years of school education these 12 tv channels are dedicated for each class one for each so this is again a very nice initiative on swayam prabha the 34 dth channels which we can see which are running 24 by 7 what is happening is four hours of content is being created and that four hours of content is run is repeated five times a day so for 20 hours this uh, satellite tv dth channel is available for the learners whatever they would like to learn see that's why i'm again saying that we uh, should understand that in our subject if somebody else has already created some content which is available on the epg patshala website or is available through the dth channels or is available through pm e vidya channels <coughs> we did not uh, take the time to do the same thing in our classes what we can do is what they haven't done is what we can add and what they have done can be given for the students to do it at home so this is what we can think but for that we all should be uh, uh, able to get it just a second i have a call i'll take it so we have this uh, swayam prabha and e vidya so these are the two important things and uh, these are very good i have seen some channels on this swayam prabha the e vidya is actually for school education so that we have been seen now this uh, i could i was very happy to see uh, that some of you have written that they are using this uh, show the related research related thing in your uh, courses i will show you the links quite interesting let me click on this okay this is uh, show the sindhu and what is this show the sindhu about you can see the main objective of this show the sindhu e show the sindhu is that uh, it is a consortia for all kind of e resources to which is uh, made available for all higher education institutions it's a very good uh, you can say uh, a uh, repository where you can have access to the entire text the bibliographic and all kind of databases 
uh, at a very low subscription. That is what you can get from this. Uh, you can see almost 217 universities have signed up right now on this portal. More than 4,200 colleges uh, are also available there. <clears throat> Just a second. Apologies, I am getting some call from the office, so that's right. Okay, so what is this e show? This into I can show you so many different <coughs> colleges, universities have signed up on this website, and through which we can get access to all kind of resources, ebooks, e journals, research articles, which are available and uploaded on this particular website. So that you can easily do. So this is again a very nice initiative. He show the Sindhu. Then we have this <coughs> show the Shuddhi. So what is this show the Shuddhi? Again, it is an initiative which provides what this anti plagiarism detection software. Okay. So that is also all of us know that uh, Urkund is there and Turnitin is there. Many others have come into the market. So through this show the Shuddhi. <clears throat> we can create our logins here and our students, our teachers, research students can get the plagiarism so use the plagiarism software which is available here. And you can see so many number of member institutions are here, users are there, so many number of documents have been submitted and the software through the plagiarism software, the reports have been generated. So these are good uh, <clears throat> initiatives which are very much useful as today we require in the higher education. <clears throat> One more initiative, as you can see, is the show the Ganga. <clears throat> now this, I am sure many of you might have seen. This is a place where uh, you can have the, uh, what you say, the PhD thesis of students uploaded. And uh, you can get all the thesis which all the students, research PhD students of different universities have uploaded on this show the Ganga website. Many of us have uh, might have used our research students might have used for this. It's a nice, very nice uh, website which has been created by UGC. It's on it's by ImplementNet and all of us can access this website and get the benefit of that. So these are three different initiatives in the area of research. <clears throat> As an example, I'm giving the ICT initiatives. Then we have again these different initiatives which you can see Okay, like Sakshat is one initiative, which is basically the uh, scholarship portal. So uh, you can have the entire, the students can get access to all different scholarships through this website that is under the Sakshat portal. Then we have this uh, another initiative, which is there, which is the National Digital Library of India, a very good initiative. Uh, if you see this website of NDL, uh, I was very happy to see some participants did write about NDL. But in case you have, haven't have seen this website, let me also share the link with all of you in the chat. It would be It is very highly recommended that you go to these websites and access content. So you can see right from a school level, CBSC, examination preparation, IIT, need preparation, joint admission test jam or gate or UGC net all these different examinations test preparation can be done through this <clears throat> school level engineering science humanities literature law even ideas now all of us are talking about entrepreneurship innovation creativity so you can see this place where the ideas coming from the students and the funding agencies that linkage you can get here all kind of publications you can see different documents, startup ideas. So all this is there on this one website. 
again it is an initiative under the enemy ict okay so you can uh, definitely access all these things which are available in the ndl then we have this national academic depository which hopefully some of you might be definitely knowing about it is a place uh, it's an online store you can say storehouse <clears throat> there are all academic certifications degrees diplomas the certificates uh, the universities are expected to upload all this on the national academic depository so students can use this 24 by 7 <clears throat> as a digital copy official digital copy it can be uh, considered and uh, many institutions uh, have started uploading now it has also been mandatory under the digital india so you have the digi locker app through which this all is getting connected so just as we have our pan card aadhar card driver's li license driving license uh, insurance policy uh, as we have all these things similarly we can have all our right from school uh, 10 standard 12 standard to our phd to all kind of academic things which we do everything can be put as a digital copy and that digital copy on digi locker is accepted as the true copy <clears throat> so you don't need any kind of further things if they if it is there for example, this is the let me show you the website so this is the website of national academic depository and you can see there are three different tags here academia that is the universities and institutions can create their account to upload their students data <clears throat> students can use the login to access his data and verify if some company wants to hire somebody then they can use this facility also so that <clears throat> that is about national academic depository then we have the virtual labs which many of us have seen uh, it was mentioned in the chat also the good thing is that it is not restricted to one particular domain every physical sciences chemical sciences major engineering disciplines everything is covered in that and it also allows some kind of simulative environments that is quite good to see that uh, list of experiments you can see for example and you can see some simulators also here like let me show you this <clears throat> so this is i'm just giving some general example let us then forex and it so you can adjust certain things like this this is the simulative environment which they have provided okay i'm just giving some random example i haven't done this before so you can see this entire thing <clears throat> so what i'm trying to say here is that we can do all kind of uh, practicals here okay that is the part which we have to understand and in all areas of engineering physical sciences also so uh, we can give certain kind of things to the students to do it themselves okay <clears throat> and that is uh, let me go back to this yeah so you can see all areas of engineering physical sciences also what comes under physical sciences physics even mathematics also you can use uh, you can see some english communication lab also here so one participant did write about language labs right so every college need not have a language lab in case you are not having you can use this virtual environment here and let the students get benefited from them so that is what we all can do as far as the virtual labs initiative is concerned then we have this uh, free and open source software this is basically for computer science related uh, students <clears throat> so free and open source software for education is what this fossi is about uh, basically in the area of science and technology we have many softwares which are proprietary softwares for example what example you are seeing on the screen right now is scilab scilab is a software which is a free software whereas uh, the similar kind of software which we use in the mathematics subject for example is matlab which is a proprietary is a costly software and we have to uh, understand that there is the whole world is moving in this direction where uh, free access to research articles open licensing open educational resources now this is the world global trend and therefore all this comes uh, at the right time to us so anybody from the area of uh, computer science information technology mathematics 
lot of programs we see which are initiated by this FOSI, which is free open source software for education. You can see a list of softwares. In addition to that, we have the spoken tutorial website of IIT Bombay. Now, again, it's a very good initiative of IIT Bombay because here we can see a list of courses, uh, the softwares on which they are offering free video tutorials. So these are uh, pre-recorded video lectures which are uploaded on the IIT Bombay Spoken Tutorial website. And these are the different uh, softwares as you can see or softwares or whatever some computer related, you can see LibreOffice. LibreOffice is a substitute for Microsoft Office. LibreOffice is a free and open source software. Uh, Moodle Learning Management System, which is a, a very good learning management system. And most importantly, Spoken Tutorial is available in all these different languages. Now, the National Education Policy 2020 is talking about bringing education in our all uh, Bharatiya languages, or the 22 scheduled languages, but also uh, the focus is also on having the dialects included into this. So here you can see there is Assamese as well as Bodo. So Bodo is a dialect. Okay? Like we have Konkani. Konkani is a dialect which is uh, in Marathi. So Maithili, Maithili language is a dialect again. So the script is same basically, but what is the, the, the language is having different dialects. So this is good thing about IIT Bombay Spoken Tutorial website that they have also, in addition to different the vast list of softwares here, they also have the, the translations done in different languages and dialects, which we can use for the students. Then we have this global initiative uh, of academic networks, Gyan as it is called as. Uh, this is a very nice uh, initiative wherein we can call foreign professor, universities, uh, professors from foreign universities and make them stay for six days here and they can deliver a course which has to be recorded and which has to be submitted to UGC. So the repository will, will be with us uh, and a good uh, professor from a very reputed university can be called. Our students will be benefited uh, through this Gyan project. So that is, this is also a good initiative, uh, which uh, we can have it with us. Let us come to the core of today's uh, this discussion, which is MOOCs. The title was uh, Use of ICT Initiatives. What are the India's different ICT initiatives in the area of e-learning? And as I discussed in one of the uh, slides that now the focus of this, though it's a conventional mode of delivery of lectures, the face-to-face -face lectures, which is happening in the classrooms in colleges and universities, the trend is of learners to learn online. So if the learners want to learn content online and which is also possible, not everything uh, need not be done online, that is fine. But certain components can be shifted to online mode. Let the students get it from themselves. So this is a good uh, thing which we should be all thinking of. Okay, now let me know from the audience just a quick because I need to know uh, where do you stand as far as this thought goes that <clears throat> how many of you have uh, created a MOOC, Massive Open Online Courses or have created at least an online course, okay, created. I am not saying uh, enrolled into some online course. If you have done, say yes. If you have not done, say no. Okay. The question is, how many of you have done or who have who has done created an online course or massive open online course? That is my question. You can say yes if you have done. You can say no if you haven't done. Okay. And my request to all the participants is no. Now please stop writing that roll numbers. Okay. It is not required. I can give you some additional time towards the end and then you can write that roll number. But now please stop writing the roll numbers. Even if you have joined late, not a problem. Okay, otherwise uh, it is not good. Okay, yes, uh, who have written yes, then please you should write which uh, course you have created. Where is it hosted? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so if you have one person did write, I think roll number 1515. So uh, if you have created the online course, where is it hosted? In which subject you have created that online course? If you can mention that, it would be good for all of us to know. For the rest of the people, I could see no, only a few. So three, four people have written no. But what about the others? We have more than 130 people here. Okay. So everybody should either write yes or you should write no. There is no third option. 
okay so those who will write yes or no will be counted their attendance will be counted if i say so <clears throat> this is a good way to take color the attendance no all of you writing your roll numbers okay let us instead of roll numbers write yes or no that will give a good count that how many of you have created an online post how many of you have not created now i am getting good replies okay more number of replies coming in see 28 no 28 who is serial number 28 you will not get any attendance mark why <laughs> you are not listening to what's happening you are just into your own mind that my roll number should get registered please come out of this okay so many people are writing no and don't feel that your answer is a negative answer if you feel that your answer no is a negative answer you are wrong writing no is a very positive answer because now you have a chance to create an online course now the thought should be going into your mind marathi mede tala mata na dokyat kida gela pahije ki ata yacha nantar mala online course banvaylaach pahije ata mi puchcha vela mala kodi vichalta i am not going to say no i am going to say yes okay so those who are writing no take this reply which you have given as a very positive reply because now the next 3 4 slides which i am going to talk about is actually going to be about how to create an online course what are the different things which we should be thinking when we are uh, planning or designing an online course that is exactly what we are going to discuss as far as the ict component is concerned in today's time in 21st century your ict is not using powerpoint presentation i mean that is of course an e learning environment that's fine but let us move forward from powerpoint presentations because we have to grow and move in the direction in which the world is moving okay <clears throat> yes i will be definitely helping you rule number 4 uh, definitely that is my plan because whenever we talk about icd people will talk about everything other than moocs or online courses but i feel as a online educator that we should be all be very much working in this area of creation of online courses and i'll show you some slides as i said but uh, let me again repeat to all of you and this is my really request uh, to all those who are able to listen to me if you uh, are not able to understand my english i can repeat in hindi and marathi also tumhi tumcha roll number lehcha chat madhe band kara ata aap log aapka roll number likhna band kar dijiye i have told in english hindi marathi all three languages if you are listening uh, and even after this somebody is writing means the only thing is this fellow has not no ears or the audio is not working at that person's end i am very categorical please stop doing this it is not good what what is the purpose we are attending a session is the attendance the only purpose of attending this uh, attending any session we all are good teachers right you should every session you should have something to be taken from the session if you are just going to go on writing your roll numbers it doesn't make any sense if you all want i can give you 5 minutes finish all that attendance part and close it at least at some point let us not do this okay let us enjoy the session i have very much interesting content in the next 3 4 slides for all of you okay let me also ask this question to you do you want me to have the remaining part of the session in english or you want to have it in a blend of english marathi english hindi i would also like to know your comfort level if you all are comfortable in the way i am currently the last 30 minutes i am speaking i can continue with the same language okay otherwise i can move in the i can have a blend of english or marathi english or hindi or whatever you people are suggesting okay so it is please continue in english okay combined language but which combined with what <laughs> yeah combining with what that is the issue no? okay english okay dual mode <laughs> i am from a dual mode university conventional and distance dual mode okay so it seems most of you are okay with english okay english is okay right now okay if you uh, generally my in, uh, in uh, this uh, The request is you make it uni language one single language okay. multi language means you have to balance things uh, and certain words the translation doesn't come to your mind at that instant then it again becomes a problem so i'll continue with english as i can see from all of you but in case you are not able to understand particular thing you can always uh, uh, request me through the chat i am 
hopping and just moving from the zoom screen to my screen again and again so that uh, you people are comfortable and i am able to see you all so let us move forward are you able to see this graph which i am showing to you very interesting graph what can you observe from this graph is the exponential growth of the number of massive open online courses being offered in the last 10 years if you take the data from 2014 to 2024 or 2012 to 2022 which is there on your screen right now those who understand mathematics the graph of e raised to x exponential graph okay it has grown from few handful of courses 5 10 15 20 courses to now currently it is more than 40000 courses not even 20000 it has gone to more than 40000 courses in 2024 this is a 2021 data in the last 3 years we still have added so many number of things into this why do you think that there is so much of growth in the massive open online courses the reason why it is happening so because there is a huge demand from the learning community and people want to know people want to learn that is which is we are, what we have to understand that this is a demand from the students community that they would like to learn online so there, because of the demand there is a huge supply and who are providing these courses this is also quite interesting most of these courses are not coming from indian universities these are coming from foreign universities these are coming from foreign establishments private establishments so where is our contribution from the state universities from the central universities from 35000 plus colleges which we have in our country 900 plus universities which we have in our country what is our contribution what is the proportion of the contribution from our side is it that this is a prerogative a kind of uh, you can say single handedly it can be only done by professors from harvard university oxford university princeton university from usa from uk from is it not is it no we indian teachers from different universities from different colleges also are equally qualitatively good are expert in our subjects we are teaching subjects the same subject for last 5 years 10 years 15 years 20 25 years we are good there is a huge demand from the learning community to learn from a particular professor of say delhi university mumbai university nagpur university shivaji university uh, bhasha ambedkar maratwada university and so many other universities but as teachers we are not ready to come out of the comfort zone as teachers, we are not ready to come out of the four wall classroom and my university, my institution. In 21st century, we have to come out of that shell. We have to come out of that old mindset that my college, my university, my 60 students, I'm happy with it. We need to reach out to thousands and thousands of students who are not able to enroll into our course. Very sad, but true. How are we able to achieve this? We need to really think in this direction that how are we going to achieve this? How are we going to reach out through the masses? Okay, in a very positive way. Okay, that is your upgradation, that is your upskilling. Okay, what do you think is the reason that these numbers are growing? These online courses numbers are growing. I gave you my reason. Do you have anything which you would like to add to my reason? You can put it in the chat. Okay, what according to you as uh, teachers of higher education is the reason that these so many number of online courses have are getting are getting added? What do you think is the reason for that? <clears throat> this roll number 58, 126, and 197. You people have not followed my instructions. I am not happy with you. I have very categorically said, don't write your roll numbers, not required. Still, you are okay. So, I've got one nice answer from Swati, madam, which is very good comfortability. Okay, so this is, I think, uh, if I've understood correctly what she has written, this is a comfortability from the learner's perspective. And what is this learner's comfortability perspective? It is the A3 concept anybody, anytime, anywhere. 
internet bandwidth and all those kind of things have enabled this anybody anytime anywhere perspective anybody should be able to learn why you need to have a university why you need to have a college okay anybody should be able to learn anywhere i am traveling right now so i should be able to get access to content any time this is midnight 12 o'clock morning 4 o'clock afternoon 6 evening 6 o'clock i want to learn the colleges and universities are not open right the libraries are closed where should i learn so that's a very nice point brought by swati madam that's very good <clears throat> what are the other answers let us check from the chat so better internet service is also a good point so this rule number 200 also has it in a very nice point because if you see the national broadband mission of government of india it says by 2025 at the gram panchayat level a 50 gbps of optical fiber internet connectivity is to be provided that is the target i don't know whether the target is where it is right now in 2024 but it was the national broadband mission which brought this kind of thought if at the gram panchayat level in 5 lakh gram panchayats in this country we are going to get better optical fiber internet connectivity then we cannot say that i am a blackboard teacher we have to come out of this okay you need not leave it absolutely 100 percent blackboard is banned that is not what i am trying to communicate but we need to reach out to the masses and in a very good way not in a very uh, different sense but yes we need to reach out to many people who would like to learn from us okay we have another answer depth of knowledge and good visualization absolutely so visualization through animations through all kind of disruptive technologies like augmented reality virtual reality mixed reality artificial intelligence so all these are there we have to make the best use of that so this is also a good answer flexibility time convenient we have a time constraint right when we are in a college and our university we have a time constraint we can give five hours six hours seven hours after that we will be moving out the student will be moving out so uh, these kind of online things are really good for the learners see never no fear of missing it out as pramod sir is writing that is very interesting point right we can take this as a, the extension of his point is flex self-paced learning i for example if i'm a slow learner i need to watch a video three times so that flexibility is there in the system once we go into the online mode okay increasing icd tools is what their remote areas due to corona period many students have been facilitated by that that's a correct answer courses are offered often designed to be more flexible so that you can work them on into your work schedule yes very true all these points which you people have listed is the reason why you see this exponential growth in the moves let us go forward now these are some of the platforms through which we can access our massive open online courses but these are not all okay these are just this is a list of just a few i have listed down swayam there why because swayam is a major initiative of ministry of education and all of us can contribute into the swayam platform that is the best part of that and each one of us okay and without any exception each one of us 130 people in this audience who are present here should get trained on how to write a proposal for swayam should get trained in how to offer a MOOC, should get trained in how to create a MOOC, how to design a MOOC, how to execute a MOOC. Everybody should get trained into this particular thing. That is what we should be thinking. So Swayam, EDX, Coursera, Udemy are all private players in the market. I have listed them because these are the, these are which I have identified. You can identify 10 more, 20 more, 30 more. As I said that the number of platforms who are offering these online courses is exponentially increasing in the entire global scenario. So the, you should look at these websites, you should enroll into some courses so that as a learner, you understand how these courses have been created. If I want to offer an online course, the, the most important prerequisite is that I should first enroll as an online learner in a particular course which is of my interest. Okay, I, this is an instruction, this is a request to all of you. What is the prerequisite, most important prerequisite if you want to offer an online course? The most important prerequisite is I should enroll into an online course as a learner. This will help us in many folds. One. How does the entire environment looks from entry to exit, the internals, the evaluation, the formative assessments, the summative assessments, everything which happens throughout that online course, we understand as a learner how it comes to us. 
and then based on this experience when we create an online course we will be able to identify the issues the challenges the problems the loopholes the missing gaps and we will be able to fill all these things so as a first hand learner of an online course we should actually write down all the experiences which we have then we'll be able to create a very nice scope so that is a prerequisite moodle i have listed de uh, deliberately because it is a free open source learning management system so those colleges who are having less funds they need not go to very high end solutions they can just have moodle installed as a learning management system and you can offer your online course through your lms this is the best thing for all of us the cn.com is a very nice uh, website in fact that is a place through which uh, you can create uh, your online course it's a uh, if you are using facebook i don't know how many of you are using facebook okay then uh, you can you will be happy using this uh, particular website the cn.com it's the cn stands for post networking uh, i'll show you my login this is my course networking page home page as you can see and you can see i have offered one course in 2019 20 which is on this particular platform so all that what we can do in this uh, entire thing is uh, we can create online courses which will be available for your students online okay and uh, it's very easy it's a very nice tool so in fact uh, i can show you many examples like for example this is there uh it's similar to a facebook website okay because uh, here you can see this is a this is a post you can rate the not a problem so this is i think my share screen sharing has stopped let me start it again okay okay so that's about the platform the cn.com you can visit this more than 250 million learners are getting benefited out of 40000 plus online courses offered through professors from more than 1200 plus universities across the world and not only courses the see how things are happening here this is not only course entire program is being offered i don't know how many of you have heard about open education resources oer okay oer is uh, i don't know how many of you have heard about it. it's a free and freely available education resource you can understand in simple terms right people have come up with an initiative called as oer university open educational resources university oeru what is this oeru you institutions can tie up or an individual learner can do one full program using open educational resources and get a degree out of it program if you do a program you get a degree out of it right so many universities in india also few universities like sndt women's university in mumbai has done an mou with oer university so their students can do some not only courses but they can do a full program through the oer universities it's a joint program you can think about like that so 100 plus online degrees are being offered through these platforms let us talk about this four quadrant method we'll just show you two slides and then we'll take a break like I, i will take some questions from you and then we'll stop for today so what are these four quadrants whenever you have to create an online course okay you have to think about these four quadrants so learning has to be done or the communication of the subject has to be done online by taking care of the four quadrant method so what are these four quadrants the first quadrant is about delivery of the content in a multimedia format like in a video format audio format if i ask you to create an online if you if i ask you to create an e content what comes to our mind first we have to create video lectures right so here you can see the quadrant one is about video lectures and also audio lectures now why this is important to understand because it is not necessary 
that e content means only video lectures in each of the subject whether you teach a subject from social sciences languages commerce or science or technology it is not 100% necessary that you should create only video lectures in all subjects in all disciplines we can create also audio lectures which we call as audio podcast so think about this quadrant 1 as a combination of video and audio lectures and what is important if you can read the slide clearly it says that audio and video content in an organized format so putting all your videos on youtube is not quadrant 1 that is my point here because it is not an organized format right one below the other one sequence then the second sequence then the third sequence then the fourth sequence it is not sequential in nature and most importantly see if you release a video on youtube what will happen i always say that if you do that teaching is definitely done let us take it for granted but has learning happened what is the answer to this question that if you release a video on youtube teaching has happened because you have de- decided something to communicate through the video you have communicated how do you authenticate validate or how do you come to this conclusion that learning also has happened there is no tool available with us through which we will be able to identify this fact that learning also has happened so it is one way delivery and therefore videos uploaded on youtube is not actually quadrant 1 because the four quadrants have to be considered as one plane as one as you can see this is the xy plane in mathematics we have right in the xy plane we have the four quadrants so this is that one plane so the video audio lectures have to come into one single platform one single place so that we are all comfortable the learners are comfortable in the learning if you see this slide the last line of the quadrant 1 what is that last line that simulations video demonstrations virtual labs along with the transcription of the video in hindi we say no anda pehle aaya ki murghi pehle aaya so there is a debate in this somebody will say no the egg came first somebody will say no the hen came first in uh, video creation th- there is no dilemma about what came first the transcript came first or the video comes first the answer is very clear the script comes first so whenever we are creating the quadrant 1 one important thing to do in that is writing the scripts we all need to learn how to write scripts if you prepare a script it is going to serve two important purposes one it will make your video content very much logical and you will be also comfortable when you are recording the video because a script is ready with you script with all kind of things which should come on the screen etc with the help of an instructional designer you should be able to create the script if you ask me who is an instructional de- designer then i'll let i'll say give me one more session sometime later i'll tell you what is an instructional designer today it is not possible because it is a, again a big story which we all have to understand the importance of an instructional designer in a entire in an online course so the point is make the script first that's the first uh, benefit of making a script is that you will be able to do a logical video the second benefit is a benefit related to the accessibility there are divyang students who are amongst the learners right so somebody will not be able to uh, hear the video audio clearly in that case you can provide the script on the screen the learner can read out the script so the learning disability is the divyang people will be benefited so accessibility also will be taken care of so prepare the script the second quadrant is not the script of the first quadrant content people get confused in the second quadrant and they feel that when they have created a video for the video they made a powerpoint presentation so many people feel that powerpoint presentation is my quadrant 2 content no the quadrant 2 is an additional resource which you should give in addition to your quadrant 1 video audio content okay so this is not the same okay. you have done one video on explanation of a particular concept you can give them some pdf material to further read about that particular concept that is quadrant 2 so quadrant 2 should include some self instruction material illustrations case studies web resources open source content research papers 
historical development of the topic anecdotal information something related additional where we will be able to take the learning of the learners to the next level okay yet one what is the first level the first level was through the video audio lectures now the second level of learning is now give them some content to read themselves learning by listening learning by actually doing so give them some activity also to do so we have the quadrant 4 which is evaluation which is assessment so assessment evaluation is all about uh, solving their difficulties uh, giving them objective questions descriptive questions uh, making them interact with you through the discussion forums which is the quadrant 3 very important i always say that quadrant 3 is the soul it is the atma of your entire online course why because it is the only place where the learners are going to interact with the moderators interact with the instructors interact with the peers and therefore this discussion forum is a very important place where we should have the learners focusing on particular concepts related to your course okay so we should be having focused questions and all those things i am going to talk about it in the next slide also so this is your four quadrant technique method what is this four quadrant in one quadrant you provide them some audio video content in the second quadrant you provide them some additional learning material in the third quadrant you make them interact by asking some questions and discussing some important topics and trying to solve their difficulty where they have stuck in the fourth quadrant you evaluate and do the assessment of the learners this is all about the four quadrant method which is taught by ugc swayam manual now let us look at another four quadrant method now this is the learner centric mooc model if you are having a pen and paper you should write down certain things in your notebooks because you will not be able to remember everything and i am sure nobody is going to watch the recorded video later on that is how the story is right <clears throat> we don't go come back and again listen to what was the session all about so we we may forget what we have heard in this session so what is this picture in front of you this picture is another type of four quadrant quadrant model which was developed by iit bombay education technology team uh, led by dr samir sir srubuddhe uh, jk and uh, sridhar ayer and uh, the all the professors associated sana mukti madam so all they have come together and they have developed this very nice interesting model called as lcm lcm stands for what learner centric mooc model so what is the importance here the importance is the adjective which has been added to that learner centricness so our online course should not be teacher centric our online course should not be technology centric our online course should be centered where centered at the learner learner centric and how do you bring the learner centricness into this picture by adding certain things into this learner centric mooc model what is the difference between this and this four quadrants are here also and four quadrants are here also i'll just quickly tell you the differences and then we'll take up questions from all of you and uh, find out what you people are interested in so that we can uh, during the question and answer maybe we can add some more points to this so what are these four quadrants let us look at the learning dialogues quadrant number 1 so we call it as led learning dialogues that's a short name what is this led learning dialogues as i told in the previous slide we create video lectures but videos are always monologues if they are not planned properly monologue means what one person is saying something you have to listen to that right nobody is going to ask question to the youtube video right how interactiveness can be brought into the video how can you convert a monologue into a dialogue the only good way we can convert a monologue into a dialogue is by adding a reflection spot so what is the reflection spot i have recorded a video and in the flow of the video in the dialogues with dialogues means the script dialogues which i am saying in the video i say let us stop this video for a moment and list down the four quadrants which we saw in the previous slide okay and i tell you all to pause the video now let me all give this activity to you and let me take it in the chat so please mention it again i can see people writing all kind of roll numbers in the chat i am really unhappy with all of all these people roll number 32 123 134 112 141 106 6. let it go on record this is not how an higher education teacher should be very bad it means you are not either you are not present physically here not even present mentally here 
absolutely out of context okay and this is this meeting is getting recorded in live stream i am putting it on record this is not how a teacher should be i am surprised you are again going on adding your roll numbers i what what will i do with your roll numbers if you have added your roll number you can quit the meeting you can go away okay so i have a question for all of you i want some answers in the chat let me see how many of you were attentive this attentiveness also will go on record i am trying to give you a demo of how a reflection spot can be in the previous slide i talked about four quadrants can you tell me what are the four quadrants each one of you can write one quadrant so four answers i can take from the chat which comes first okay so we have 179 who has given quadrant 1 is e tutorial quadrant 2 is e content quadrant 3 is coming it is in the pipeline but okay you, one person can give one answer so what was the fourth quadrant about somebody can answer that so what was the third quadrant about okay so fourth quadrant was about assessment correct so the rule number 30 is correct 23 is also correct what was the third quadrant about discussion form so good very nice so 19 111 has given the correct answer which is assessment uh, okay that was for the discussion 152 102 also was about clearing the doubts correct this is absolutely correct so this is now what happens in a video it is a pre recorded video right so how do you bring interactiveness there are many softwares which are available you can write down the name of the software which i am saying right now later on sometime you can get trained about it the name of the software or the tool through which we can make our monologue videos into dialogue videos interactive videos by adding reflection spots wherein the learner will actually write down and type some answers to the question which you have asked in the video and the video will respond to that this interactiveness is brought by a software tool called as h number 5 and p h 5 p H5P is a tool through which you can make interactive videos. There is another software called as LUMI, Lumi. So Lumi software also does the same thing. It uses H5P technique and creates interactive video. Lumi is a software you can download on your desktop and you can make the interactiveness into any video which you have, any video. Okay, what happens in this? The video gets automatically paused. A question comes up on the screen. The learner has to attempt the answer. and then the video can be resumed forward that is interesting right so this you can do using make it interactive so this is learner centric mooc model where we have we only don't have videos in the quadrant 1 but we have added a reflection spot and reflection spot means places where you create an interaction between you and the learner so there is a learner centricness in that second quadrant we have learning by doing also we write it as lbd so what is learning by doing we all know that just listening is not going to help you have to also write down something you have to also give some kind of uh, activities for the learner so that they will be also doing it simultaneously with you so in the second quadrant what we do is we give them some activities but activities is not learner centricness okay what is the learner centricness is that to each activity of the learner whatever the learner has responded each response will give them a constructive customized feedback so giving a constructive customized feedback is the learner centricness in the second quadrant which we bring here so we are giving some multiple choice question question uh, mcq to uh, as an objective question for the learners what are the there are four choices for each choice there is a correct answer and the remaining three are incorrect answer giving them just saying correct and incorrect is a very simple thing to do that is a customized solution what is a constructive customized solution in that the constructive customized solution feedback is what you give them some additional information about the correct answer to the learners this is taking the learning and the confidence of the learner to the next level for an incorrect answer give them what is the correct answer tell them why they why could they thought of think about this incorrect answer give some information about the incorrect answer give some additional information about the correct answer the incorrect answer is a correct answer of which question you can give these are all constructive thoughts so your and this is all online right you have to do it one time you don't have to do it regularly you don't have to do it manually right so that is what you all people can do when we say to give you a constructive customized feedback that portion in the second quadrant is the learner centricness then we have the learning extension extend the learning of learners how will you extend the learning of the learners 
so giving resources was a part of quadrant 2 in the previous case right in the quadrant 2 in the previous case we did have giving them some additional learning material to learn what you do is that to each such resource which you have provided create an assimilation quiz see it is not just a quiz the adjective to the quiz is assimilation quiz how much the learner was able to assimilate from your video lectures from your audio podcast from the activities from the feedback what the learners have learned from the additional learning resources which you have provided what the learners what is the assimilation of knowledge that has to be tested so these are not random questions or random evaluation strategies this is very focused strategy where you like to you have decided a path through which the learner should be moving at each path you have made some checkpoints these checkpoints will take care of the learning of the learners these are not random learning strategies these are planned pedagogically planned learning strategies and the fourth quadrant is again the learners experience interaction we all know this fact that when we sit as a group together and when we discuss in a group the learning definitely goes to the higher level because the learner has a choice right now the learner listens to all kind of people people who have better knowledge than us people who have less knowledge than us so interactions makes learning go to the to the next level up in the higher level so what is the fourth quadrant learners experience interaction is a focused question for discussion again the adjective is very important it is not mere discussion question it is a focused question for discussion so you and your students both are focused what is the learning path where where we are supposed to go in which direction we are supposed to go is very clear in our mind what is the next thing in that peer interaction interacting with peers is always comfort zone for the learners i am learning from my co learners it's a very good learning experience many a times what an instructor says may not be appreciated maybe but what is being said by the peers is being appreciated well so peer interaction is important that's why the discussion forum is important because that is a place through which the students will be interacting asking them reflection quiz reflection about all different aspects self reflection is required reflection about the content is required reflection about the teaching is required reflection about the uh, flow of the entire course is required all reflections the learner should feel that i am a part and parcel i am a component of this entire online course so reflection quizzes are important so think about this as a model this is called as a learner centric mooc model through which you can create good uh, content good online course an online course which will be well appreciated by the students so here i will stop the presentation i do have two three slides more but i will i am interested more in having some interaction with all of you let me allow um, all of you to unmute your mic okay so i have allowed this feature of unmuting the mic so and but i will i have a request to all of you hope you follow the request there is a hand raise option which is available in the bottom row of the um, different menus of this zoom application if you go to the reactions menu and click on reactions you will see the raise hand option so anybody who has a question okay you can please uh, raise your hand i'll call out your name and then i would be happy to get a question from you and i will be also happy to give an answer which i am uh, able to give to whatever question you would like to pose so your question can be related to online learning e learning how moocs swayam and all those kind of things whatever related to whatever we did in this today's session okay the forum is open for questions if you are not comfortable asking question through the mic you can ask the question through the chat
Okay, so we have a question from 179. So 179, if you're there somewhere, you can just on your video for a moment and let me see you. Can I see you on screen, 179? Not possible, maybe. Okay. So let me answer his question, his or her, whoever it is. Uh, camera is not working. No, not a problem. I couldn't see your message. Fine. So the question is, uh, uh, the participant has asked about how, what are the step-by-step -step, uh, uh, process of making or designing an online course? Well, it will take at least uh, one hour for me to give you all the steps. But I can tell you to uh, remember uh, something which is which we call in instructional design as a ADI model. ADI model is what? A double D I E. So if you are writing down what I'm saying, then you can remember this what I'm saying right now. A double D I E is an is an instructional mo uh, design model. Each alphabet has a meaning, and those are steps for making an online course as a general rule. Okay, you can add some more things also in that. So based on your, I can add more number of things also. What is A stand for? A stands for analysis. Okay, A is for analysis. D is for design. The next D is for development. The next I is for implementation. And E is for evaluation. Analysis, design, development, implementation, evaluation. These are the five spare phases you can say when you are creating an online course analysis is the first step wherein you analyze why i should offer an online course why i should offer this online course this particular online course certificate course in quantitative techniques in statistics in management why should i offer this online course who are my who will be my audience what will uh, so all these questions no? these questions have to come in the analysis space, the what are the learning objectives? What are the course outcomes? Uh, all what we talked today about uh, LO, CO, PSO, and all those kind of things, outcomes. All this comes in the analysis space. The design phase is where on paper, not practically. On paper, you write down all your strategies of how your how many team members you have, what is the expertise of each team member. Who will do what? Who will prepare the open presentation? Who will prepare the script? Who will do on paper recording? Who will create assessment quizzes? Who will create for discussion forum questions? Everything on paper. The entire flow. You have two units, four units. Write down uh, the details of these units. Right? All these things will come in the phase where you are going to design your online course. After design comes the development phase where what you prepared on the paper is what you are actually going to design, means you are going to record. So for example, in the design phase, you have written down uh, that you will be recording 100 videos of 10, 10 minutes. In the development phase, you will actually record those 100 videos. You will take help of your instructional designer, you will take help of your studio and all those kind of artists and you will do the recording. That's the development phase. So you are course is completely recorded implementation now you offer it through your learning management system you will offer it on uh, uh, some kind of swayam platform or some other platform so that is implementation phase and the final phase is evaluation at the end of the course during the course you will evaluate your learners in different phase whatever you have written down in the design phase that unit one i'll be asking mcq Unit 2, I'll be asking them a case study to be done, etc. So these are broadly the five things, five phases or five steps which we can think about. I've just answered in a very short way. Of course, it will, uh, I can I, ask in some, uh, if you give me one and a half hours, I can explain it better. But you can take it forward from your end. 
we have a question from uh, roll number 30 most of the students in our institute come from rural areas so we can motivate them to join online course yes see wherever possible wherever there is internet integration wherever it is possible we should add technology and we should uh, motivate the learners to learn but the primary thing is our teachers themselves are not innerly motivated motivation should come from within so first let us we all get motivated inspired to do certain things online let us we all be comfortable and then we can tell if we don't do anything and just go blah 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 saying to the students who will listen to us i in my life have never created an online course and i how should i expect my learners to attend an online course i have not attended one course any online course online why should i expect my students to attend it online in my online course, all I, now this is applicable to 133 people who have joined today. Out of this 133, there is 50 odd people who are just writing the roll numbers. They are actually not a part of this online course. They are just interested to get the certificate. They want their attendance recorded. I am very particular. You may like me or dislike me. That is not my problem. Okay, so teachers should be up, some kind of maturation. Maturity has to be there. No, what are we doing? Why are we attending this FDP? Ask this question to yourself. Okay. So I'm just moving out of the question. So question your answer to your question is yes, we should motivate the learners. But the prerequisite is we all should be innerly motivated. That is what you should be definitely thinking of. Okay, so what are the best tools, best ICT tools for arts faculty? Well, I cannot say like this, uh, what is for arts faculty? There are many, many, many ICT tools. Uh, if a specific things thing comes to my to me i can answer it properly because there are so many tools available so many softwares available so many technology related things available it depends upon our own requirement we should be thinking about it uh, what are the tips for effective online teaching i have a list of i have a list i have a separate presentation which i did for many institutions uh, which talks about uh, the tips for online teaching I'll just tell you one tip. One tip means one uh, word of uh, what you can say. I should not use the word wisdom. <laughs> I don't guarantee that what I'm saying is wisdom. But one thing I can suggest as a tip for online teaching. And that tip is that we should understand the difference between face-to-face -face classroom teaching and online teaching. The problem is that the way we teach in a physical face-to-face -face classroom we imitate the same in an online environment. That is a problem. So the teaching online effectively means using the online pedagogical and technological tools and strategies to teach online. If you do that, it will be effective. If you don't use the online pedagogy, online technology related things and just repeat your physical classroom in an online mode through Zoom, through Google Meet, through WebEx, it is not going to be effective. It will be online teaching, but it will not be effective. So I am very nice, thankful to you to ask that question. We have a question from Narendra Gavli who is asking, do we need permission from affiliating university for preparation of MOOC to upload on the platform? Yes. For uh, Swayam courses, you need to submit a letter from the registrar of the university saying that my this so-and-so faculty of my university is going to offer an online course on Swayam and the credits for whoever finishes, completes this course successfully will be authenticated and uh, it will be signed by the director board of examination of my university. That is letter which has to be given. So you need to have this when you are going for Swayam. For Coursera, Udemy, EDX kind of private platforms, the platforms do not ask it. But it is good to take the prior permission from your higher education institution, university or college, whatever it is. And with the proper permission, make it a formal activity. It is always good to go in a formal way. No, no problem. Teaching aids are required in an institution. I think this is an answer. So there is no nothing to question about how many hours the course is designing. I mean, uh, I have not understood the question grammatically, but probably the question is how many hours it takes to design a course, if that is the thing. Or how many hours a course should be there when you are offering it online? Maybe whatever your question is. It depends on number of credits for the courses. If it is a one credit course, then you require a minimum five hours of e-content to be created. So one credit equal to five hours. So you can multiply the number of credits. For a four credit course, it is 20 hours of content. So what else we have? Uh, thank you very much. Oh, all thank yous are there. Fine. 
what will be the role of academic libraries in the mooc they will act as uh, digital depositories so libraries have to become digital there is no option to that so libraries can become digital repositories for, from where the students can access additional reading material self instruction material uh, this ppt will be shared with the organizers so you will get the ppt but the oh, my question counter question to you is are you going to read the ppt after the session is over just give me that guarantee in any case i will be sharing with the organizers i am not going to keep it with me my presentation is uh, with a open license cc by sa if you have seen the master slide so all of you can use the ppt uh, and reuse it and share it and reshare it redistribute it edit it modify it add your name into it and you can release it in your name with the same license okay so i think we should wind up now i am very uh, thankful to all the participants who were active throughout the session and please don't mind uh, for my words uh, in, in which uh, i was not happy with few participants who were just putting down the roll numbers but uh, i my minimum requirement and expectations from teachers attending online session is that you should be there to listen to the person who is giving the lecture you should if you are not attending not attentive in getting what the resource person is trying to say it doesn't make any sense i mean you are as good as not being there in the session so that is my humble submission to all of you hope you take it seriously in that sense and once again i thank the organizers for inviting me and uh, having an interaction with all of you uh, hope to see you somewhere physically face to face also in addition to the online board uh, from my side it is over thank you very much namaste if there is any formal uh, vote of thanks or closing required then some may initiate that otherwise we can exit the meeting Okay, I think there is no formal closing thing, so I am exiting the meeting. Uh, once again, thank you and namaste. Majiro fast cut leg, school cut leg. Hello, sir. Hello.
Okay. 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 Okay.
Yes. Hello, sir. Any instruction from department? Hello. Ah, Abhi sir, se baat kiya maine. Rafi sir se. So sir ne kaha ki aap sab log left ho sakte hain. Leave ho sakte ho kya? Left ho sakte hain. Yes, yes. Left ho sakte hain. Okay. सैटरडे संडे का है सर टाइम तो दिला मैडम मला सखा भाऊ है हम्म मा आता तुम्ही कधी जाणार दुबईला मी जाऊन आले ऑलरेडी का इकडे खूप शॉपिंग करतात ना लोक जाऊन तुमच्या मुलीला सारखं जावं असं वाटत असेल नाही अच्छा आता अमृता मॅडम गेल्या होत्या ना तिकडेच गेला होता तुम्ही तर सगळं बघितलं असेल मज्जा आहे बाबा लोकांची हॅलो सर इज देअर एनी सेशन आलाय का तुमच्या बाबाच हॅलो प्लीज रिप्लाय तुमच्या मुलीला मजा येत असेल ना हॅलो राफे सर राफे सर शायद बिझी आहे मॅने उनसे बात किया था अभि सर आप लोग लेफ्ट हो सकते है हॅलो अमोल सर अमोल सर गौरव सर दोन भी नाही ओके हम लोग लेफ्ट हो सकते हैं सर ने कहा राफे सर ने कहा कि आप सब लेफ्ट हो सकते हैं यस यस यू कैन लीव द मीटिंग टुमारो टुमारो वी विल जॉइन सर वी आर हैविंग हॉलिडे नो कोर्स विल बी देयर ऑन ट्वेंटी ओके सर हेलो थैंक यू सर यू डिड नॉट पिक अप सो आई हैव गिवन इट टू समवन एल्स Thank you. 
पण त्यांनी काही होणार आहे का फायदा मग काही नाही होणार उलट ते उलट ते जास्त असे मी नाही सर मी शिकते अजून ट्वेंटी फोर ट्वेंटी फोर